Hey guys, it's Drek. This is the Raven finally making my mod tutorial for it. This will be the, the reasonably basic mod tutorial with the voltage mod coming at a later date. So, the things that I don't like are it will rev and fire only when there is a clip in the blaster. When you remove the clip, it won't rev and it won't fire. Now, I just don't like having locks in my blasters, so I will be removing a lot of the locks and we'll see if there's anything else I can do inside to improve the performance. But, for starters, all the screws are on this side, so I'll start taking those out now. Alright guys, so there are 17 screws in the Raven. They're all roughly the same size, so don't worry about that. I'm going to butterfly open the shell into two halves. In this half, you can see that there's really nothing inside. It's very empty. All right, now similar to the barricade, we have a dual flywheel system here along with our fake barrel. Now, the barrel is going to induce barrel drag, but without it, there's nothing to guide the darts. So we need to leave that in, sadly. There's no way to get around that. It's going to constantly cost us performance. But that's part of what we pay for a cool blaster that's a bullpup design. I'm just removing this rail attachment accessory and I don't think I'll need to remove anything else maybe I'll take the jam door off for just a minute while I work on it so here's the flywheel assembly it's got the two flywheels built-in resistors and what appears to be a rubber kinda door here guarding the entrance to the flywheels which I think again I'll leave intact because although it does slow the darts down as they go through, it helps to guide them. So that's cool. I'll leave that in. Now there are two main locks when dealing with the Raven. There are the trigger locks and there's the electronic locks. Now you can see down here that this is a push button to activate. And when you push this down, it depresses that switch, which is what allows the motors to rev. But it only allows those motors to rev if this is pressed down, again another push button switch and this is pushed down which the jam door typically activates so these are all three in my mind electronic locks and they all need to go and be replaced for something that's just one on off kill switch so I'll be removing this one I'll be removing this one and I'll be removing this one and soldering the wires for a hard line to the battery pack which is on the other side here now if you look down in there you can see that there's a metal rod that attaches the trigger which is on a lever action here to the dart pushing mech again very similar to the barricade and the return spring is underneath it so that has two locks on it as well it's got this first one here which when you depress this pulls this down and allows this to move freely now the other one is the one that locks the trigger itself over here has to be depressed by this which releases the trigger right there so it needs to be revved to fire. Again, I hate the locks, so I'll be removing all of those locks, and I'll show you what that looks like, as well as the electronic locks. But those are the two main locks in the Raven. You can see that it's just as simple as it operates. It's just two flywheels and a dart pusher and a clip well. So I'm going to get to work on that now. All right, guys, so I'm going to start with the mechanical locks. One Phillips head screw right here holds on the trigger take that off temporarily then there's another Phillips head screw right here once you loosen that remove this and then underneath here you can see that this is the lock itself it's got a spring on this end and a notch there remove that entirely and set it aside now I will be clipping the electronic lock out but I'm leaving it in for two reasons one I have an idea for it later on and two it will keep this from just freely floating around in the blaster the electronic push button here will hold that button in place so it's not just floating and constantly rattling around also I would suggest adding this piece back just to hold everything down again this switch and it costs you nothing this is the lock so once it's gone putting this back is no real issue and then you'll put your trigger back on now over here it's again really simple to remove the other physical lock you remove this piece one Phillips head screw and here is the other lock Again, a spring and an orange piece, and set that aside. So, these are your two mechanical locks for the trigger, and get rid of those. You could put this piece back, but it's 
pointless because it doesn't hold anything in or stabilize anything and it only serves to impede putting the clip into the blaster. So in a way it's kind of a pain on its own and I'm going to get rid of it as well. Now I'm going to move on to the electronics which is where things get fun. Alright now this is helpful when doing your electronic lock removal. Again I'm leaving this but cutting it out. I'll be removing this one and this one entirely but to really see your circuits now I'm colorblind so the color coding doesn't help me at all but I can trace wires well I've been doing circuitry forever but to see where it actually connects to the battery pack you've got to remove this part it's just a guide for the clip it's sort of glued in you can see the remnants of the glue there but it pops out very easily and it should be easy to get back in and it's just not a problem to remove it so remove that set it aside in order to get it out it becomes easier if you also set aside your mag release button which is this and you can see that these are the leads for the battery pack as long as you keep your power source internal in here it should be easy to keep everything straight by virtue of these leads now I'm gonna start slicing and dicing this circuit alright guys so you can see that I have finished removing all of the electronic safety locks and I have really streamlined the circuit here you can see that I've added a switch which has just been drowned in hot glue but from the outside that's what my switch looks like when I flip it it has full range of motion and it's easy to turn on but hard to turn off which is by design I want it to to stay on that's the whole purpose of a kill switch so down here this is the only real trick to the way I've redone the wiring if you locate your switch on this stock into the blaster which seemed the most logical place to put it you need to make sure you tuck your wiring down really far and then seat it down in there so that when you add in your clip release button that still has full range of motion and does not impact your wiring at all now everything's been soldered down with this actually this is my latest soldering gun and I like it because it's wireless but I've soldered the leads here and I think that this is a red and green again I'm not sure but those are original and then I used orange wiring so I'd know where I'd replaced it and these are the two leads from the battery pack again I used the original ones this does nothing but I bent it over my wiring and everything's been just really cleanly wired so that the motors should run flawlessly with the extra voltage that I'll show you that I'm adding in a minute that'll be part of the final segment over here you can see that I've left this button intact I've even left its button inside and I've hot glued in all the wiring Now that wiring is not attached to anything nor is it doing anything but it's out of the way it's tucked away and it's locked down with hot glue I like that my circuits are very durable and can't really go anywhere anyway this is ready to be sealed back up I'll show you the voltage mod and then I'll fire it for you the only thing I want to mention is before I seal it up make sure you put this piece back in and make sure that no matter how you've locked down your circuit this still fits in snugly it's very important for the clip functioning alright guys I have completely finished the ultimate Raven mod guide you can see here these orange pieces are what remains of the locks that I removed they're almost entirely garbage I think these would make a nice catch spring so I will save them but these are the locks they're gone Here's all that remains of my electronic safety locks. Again, you get two, three if you want to take this one out as well, of these push button switches, which is nice. I could use these for any number of other hobbies. Now, I went ahead and did the voltage mod. The voltage mod was very simple. I'm using Xeno batteries. A lot of nerfers like to use Trustfire Xeno batteries. They're just as nice. They're lithium batteries. They are 3.7 volts, so with all four, I believe I'm running 14.8 volts, which is, let's see, it originally had 6 volts total, so it's over double what it was running originally, and it definitely shows in the performance. I'm going to seal up the jam door now. Now the Raven is a little bit louder now that it's got these mods but it's still quieter than a barricade with a voltage mod which is very cool I think it's because of the way that the motors are designed and encased there's a lot less open space especially with a clip in anyway I filled this firefly clip with the glow in the dark streamlines they're my favorite as I mentioned you want this to be a smooth clip system and it definitely is 
Now, instead of revving it with this switch here, I now activate the entire blaster with an on-off switch in the back that I've installed subtly as part of the stock. And it's down for on and up for off, and it's easier to turn on than it is off, which is good. Because if you were slinging this blaster and wanted to activate it quickly, you'd want to turn it on instantly and not have to worry about it accidentally flipping off. So, there it is. You can tell that it's louder, but I can now fire with the jam door open. There are no safeties. going to fire off the rest of the clip. Alright, so my clip is now empty. I've expended all the darts. I'm getting much better ranges now. I feel like this is the way the Raven should have been to start with. It hits at least 60 feet, if not a little more, and it's much more accurate now. The barrel drag from the bullpup system is not as big of a deal with this much force behind the darts with the flywheel spinning this fast. And the blaster is just very efficient and very powerful. I love the semi-auto firing. I think it's very cool. And I'm just really pleased with how this mod turned out. I like being able to fire with the jam door open, especially if I'm shouldering the blaster, so that I can look and see visually how many darts I have left through the jam door. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention, but I think that that just about sums it up. This has been my ultimate set of mods for the Nerf Raven. And as always, I want to thank you guys Final for watching. Agendum and the HVZers in particular will like this one. If you do all of my voltage mods properly, the Raven will achieve enough force that even if you run out of streamlines, you can use a dart with a wider tip like this new style tagger. And it can fire with just as nice accuracy and range as the streamlines. You can only put one at the top of your clips or, again, if you run out of ammo, you could throw one in an empty clip. But I will show you that firing. Anyway, I thought that that was pretty cool, and I'm hoping that you guys achieve similar results. Thanks for watching.